Hi, I'm Jim Traxler. I'm here today to introduce you to Vivian Douglas. She's a missionary in Guatemala, whom the John Knox Mission Committee supports, and I do myself, personally. Vivian and I are old friends. She plays the French horn, I play trumpet, and we played in an orchestra and choir on a mission trip to Russia in 1995. And it was from that trip that Vivian was led to enter the missionary field. She is now in Guatemala and operates a music school and music camp for at-risk kids in Guatemala City. So Vivian, um, I know from knowing you all these years that you have been walking with Jesus. And I know that you are walking with Jesus in your ministry in Guatemala. So I'm guessing you have some stories of walking with Jesus uh, with your music students and also on a personal basis. So tell me some of your stories about Guatemala. I do have lots of great stories of God being amazing, um, but I will just tell two. First one um, is with a student of mine who was, uh, during COVID, we ended up doing our special education program online. It's called PACE. And so she was doing that program with me, learning to read. Third graders still didn't know the names of the letters and the sounds that they make. Absolutely no comprehension even once she started to get that. So she's in this program with me, helping her to learn to read and learn how to learn. And we were, it was near Christmas time, so we were going through um, the cartoon Bible, and we were reading the Christmas story, but it's because it's cartoon, it kind of condenses things together. So it had the birth, um, and then the life of Jesus' ministry, and then his death and resurrection. And that uh, sparked a conversation about her salvation, and if she knew who Jesus was, and what he had done for her. And as the conversation went on, I realized I needed to put it in a context that she could understand. So we started talking about adoption, that when you accept Jesus as your savior, it's like being born or being adopted into the family of God and the privileges that you get and the inheritance that you get and, and the, the belonging that you get from being part of the family of God. And in addition to salvation, there's these extra benefits. And so <clears throat> she, that very day online, pray to accept the Lord as her savior and to become part of the family of God, to be adopted into the family of God. And so for me, that was a moment of realizing walking with Jesus is very important. Part of that is just listening to the, to the Holy Spirit, nudging you, not just to redo the thing you're supposed to do, but to take it that next step further and ask the questions that might lead someone to the throne room to make a decision for Jesus. On a personal note, uh, recently I had a situation where I was challenged with a big temptation and it um, came down to integrity, not that anybody would see or anybody would know, but the orphanage had asked me if I had enough funds to buy some plates, bowls, and spoons and forks for the kids because they had um, lost or broken and they didn't have enough to feed all of the kids at the same time. And so... I was in the market looking for band uniform black socks and ended up in this China store and uh, found plates and stuff. I was so excited for a discount price. And so I negotiated if I could get a special price for buying in bulk and um, got all this stuff counted out and plates and big stacks of stuff. And they brought a box and we carried it all in front. It was really heavy. And um, when I'm ready to start paying and getting the factura, which is the legal receipt for that another guy came up he said wait a minute what are you doing and so he wanted to count them all again and then he said oh that's not the price for the plates and so he kept changing things up and making it really difficult to check out and eventually um he gave me a receipt but he kind of took over the negotiation and he gave me the tax receipt but by that time I was a bit frazzled there was park the parking situation was bad we were blocking traffic and so I took the receipt and I ran out the door. We dropped the stuff at the orphanage. And later when I was looking at this receipt, I realized he had not charged me for the forks or the spoons at all. And he was so dis disagreeable that I was like, okay, well, that's just a benefit. We get an extra 200 quetzales worth of merchandise. But then the Holy Spirit is nudging me. Is that the right thing to do? Is that what Jesus would do? And so I ended up, I had to wait a couple of weeks till I could find somebody to go with me, went back down. And I, it took a long time to find that man, make sure it was the same man, because if I ended up talking to his boss, he could have lost his job. 
But so I found that man, talked to him, and he just could not understand why I would come back to give him 200 quetzales without taking any merchandise. And I guess they hadn't added up all the books yet. So uh, he still, he took it. He's looking at me like this crazy woman doesn't know what she's doing, but I'm happy to take her money. But that was a point where for me, it's not about show. It's not about that the world knows. And that's not why I'm telling this story, but it's about being attentive to that still small voice. Cause I love a deal. And so when 200 get silos of free merchandise, yeah, I'll take that. And then the Holy spirit starts to convict what's the right thing to do. And so for me, walking with Jesus is trying to be more and more attentive all the time, every day to that still small voice, leading me, guiding me, when to speak to somebody, when to ask questions and when to walk in integrity. So those are my two quick stories. Well, that's great. Vivian, I think it does remind me of uh, looking back to uh, remember the what would Jesus do bracelets and so forth. But, um, that, that's really what walking with Jesus is all about in many ways is what would Jesus do in this situation? That That is a part of walking with Jesus. So I thank you for your stories. I uh, hope that God will continue to bless you uh, in your uh, mission work in Guatemala. Um, it, it's wonderful work that you're doing. Um, and if any of those, those who are listening to this uh, would like to help financially, uh, just contact the John Knox um, office and they will route you to me and I'll guide you through the process of making contributions. So we just uh, want to remind everybody once again that um, you are not alone. God cares for you and so do we. 